My name is Katherine Hayhoe, and I'm a climate scientist. We look at what climate change means to us in the places where we live. For so many people, climate change is an issue for future generations or maybe for the polar bear. But the reality is that climate change is already loading the weather dice against us here and now. We know that heat waves are getting more intense and more frequent, heavy precipitation, is getting more intense and more frequent as well. Coastal storms are being affected, sea levels rising. We know that changes are already happening. And for so long, for the history of human civilization really, we've been planning for the future based on the past. In other words, our 100 year flood zones, our drought of record, our building codes are all based on the conditions of the past, our long-term average, as well as the highs and the lows. But today, we know that the past is no longer a reliable guide to the future. It's as if we've been driving down a road for hundreds of years, looking in the rear view mirror to keep us on the road. But there's a curve coming up. And in fact, we are already on the beginning of that curve and our wheels are already on the rumble strip sounding the alarm that if we don't look ahead into the future to see how climate is changing, we will run off the road. So that's why now, any organization that makes plans that are longer than just a few years, and water systems are a big part of that, as well as energy systems, building infrastructure, transportation infrastructure, any organization, any city um, that makes plans that go more than a few years into the future, today we really need to include an understanding of how climate is changing. Sometimes we just need to know the direction of the trend because the adaptation options that are available to us aren't really affected by whether heat waves get twice as frequent or five times more frequent. We would still build cooling centers anyways. But other times, especially related to water, we really need quantitative information. Because for example, if we're going to be replacing our storm sewer system and our old pipes were this big, then the question is, do we replace them with pipes that are this big or pipes that are this big? It turns out that if climate is only changing a little bit, then we, and we put in pipes that are too big, we've wasted money that could be spent on other things at this time. But if we put in pipes that are just a little bit bigger and it turns out that climate change is really increasing heavy precipitation a lot, we're gonna have to dig that system up and replace it before the end of its lifetime, which is gonna be far more expensive. So that's why for certain types of impacts, we really need quantitative projections. Now, of course, we know that the future is uncertain. We also know that we humans are the biggest part of that uncertainty. Our choices will determine the carbon emissions that are driving future change. But what we can do is we can look at a range of possible futures, depending on the choices that we humans make under anything from a lower to a higher scenario, or changes per degree of warming, what happens if the world gets warmer by one and a half to three degrees or more. And then there's also a range of scientific uncertainty around that. But we're used to coping with uncertainty and risk when we make decisions. And knowing at least the direction of the trend and the range of potential changes around a variable provides us with valuable information that we can then use to inform decisions.